Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Hello everyone, this is Rob Scribner and welcome to RV Talk Radio. And this is episode 119, 119, and welcome to the show. And uh, yeah, we got some interesting feedback and, of course, some interesting stories. So stay tuned. This video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available on Amazon right now. Before we get started, please take the time to subscribe, then click on the bell icon to get notified of our future videos. Well, we're back and interesting, interesting thing happened right after the last show I did. <laughs> so anyway, I, uh, I rest my case actually, but so I, uh, you know, I, I was telling you about some of the stuff going on out there in the old RV world and, uh, how, um, uh, channels get started and they use everything they can to build themselves up. Um, they will use and abuse any kind of person or platform they can to build their numbers because they're not actually into RVing as much as they are into being popular in the RV world to make their numbers uh, by views, making their YouTube pay money so that you guys can fund them for traveling. So uh, uh, I... Uh, reached out to the um, uh, channel that was actually started this conversation in the first place. I said, I tell you what, um, I, I will do an interview. You can do an interview with us on RV Talk Radio. Um, we're approachable. And, uh, <laughs> of course, and I told you in the last uh, uh, show I did is uh, – uh, we're not as big and large as, as the big things because when you have an, a channel and you can stay with your niche 100%, your channel will grow. There's no doubt. And I already told you guys, we switched from RV Travel Buddy to Outdoor Travel Channel because we're kind of in limbo. Um, we still do all kinds of stuff in traveling, but we're not as niche and we're not going to grow. We're not a very big YouTube channel. <laughs> so <laughs> I, of course... Shoot a note to these folks, and uh, they they're too busy for us. They, what I know exactly what happened. Uh, oh, and they rubbed in our face. Oh, we're going to get interviewed by uh, RV USA. It's like cool, <laughs> good good for you guys. That that's what you were complaining about was nobody was giving you uh, collaboration, and now you're getting it, and now you're judging who you're giving it to. And so when you look at our YouTube num numbers, they're only in the three, over 3,000, where, you know, other shows that are just YouTube-oriented uh, will be in multiple thousands, uh, much bigger than we are. But what they neglect to look at is our podcast numbers. <laughs> and so um, out of ignorance, I guess, uh and not to mention that RV Talk Radio is also on Good Talk Radio, our radio station, which plays 24-7, and RV Talk Radio shows play there all the time. So uh, uh, anyway, I just laugh because I rest my case. These people that are doing videos that are popular are doing it for the money. They're doing it for the views. And they're doing it to sell you stuff. Sell you stuff. They want you to fund their travels or be fund their, their activities as a gypsy. It's over and over again. Just some are better at it than others. I have no problem with shows that are... Uh, doing reviews and uh, uh, having you click on a link to Amazon and um, and and Patreon stuff. There's some shows out there that really do some great shows. Like I watch a show called SV Delos, which is actually sailing. 
but they do such a good job and you can see the effort they put in. It is worth it to be on their patron and, and, and support them because every I look forward to every show. I mean, totally just because of the photography and the great scripts that they, they actually don't write scripts, but it's a great, you can see the work that they put into it. Um, <clears throat> just like... Uh, uh, when you watch these shows that do question and answers, live stream, we're going to do a live show. You can ask us anything. All you do is it's a stroking show is, is you're uh, stroking their ego so they can see how many people are interacting with them. And it's just, all you do is pumping them up. It's like a drug to them. It's like every day they are trying to figure out how to get more views, make more money. And what they can do on their channel to get more views and make more money. So I ask you, these people that do RV channels and are like that, do they just think about the RV channel and the RV industry 24-7 and the views of, of trying to increase views, subscriptions, and make money? Are they really RVers? I question, are they really an RVer? Because saying that, I asked myself, just like on radio stations, like, oh, uh, just because um, these guys don't want to do an RV sh uh, show with us because we're, uh, we're not as popular, um, we don't care. And so the other message they gave me is, oh, contact us later and we might do an interview with you. Uh, I was going to contact you in the first place. I contacted you to help you out if you want to be an rv talk radio you have to make some effort of saying hey <laughs> can we be an rv talk radio i don't beg i am not going to beg these people to be do shows with us i there's too many other channels out there that love to do an interview with us if we approached them uh one is we're don't live and breathe rv 24 7 that's my point these guys are living and breathing RV stuff 24 7 not because they enjoy RVing but how to sustain what they're doing do you get that they're not true RVers and and what I want to do is talk about true RVers today based off a wonderful letter I got um, from the last show RVers do not sit around their RV 24-7 trying to figure out how to highlight their lifestyle and do a show to entice you to want to be an RVer too. 90% or better RVers do not do that. In fact, most of them have no clue what the heck I'm even talking about. And so... That's why we started RV Talk Radio. Is we're talk, we talk about we don't talk about fix it and, and and maintenance and things like that. There's other shows doing that, and I commend them. They're great, um, and I, I'm tickled pink of RV um, RV US RV Show USA, whatever they call themselves. Uh, they've worked hard to do what they're doing. They're gr they're great at it, and uh, um, and like uh, the uh, geeks guys and uh, uh, education 101 they do some wonderful how-to videos and they're very I mean it, they almost have a library where you can fix things on your RV and they've done a really good job at that we focus on lifestyles um, RV living and RV lifestyles and so you'll hear us talk about all different levels of life RV lifestyle and I can tell you one thing 90% of the RVers out there are not channels and they're certainly not trying to sell you stuff every day. And they're not, I repeat, are not depending on you to fund their travels. If you want to become an RVer, yes, these are the places to come. But do not let them be your influence. The ones that are trying to sell you stuff. The 90% uh, percent that you do not hear about, those are the people you should be talking to. And I suggest get away from YouTube, get away from podcasts. Go to an RV park or go for a vacation and go visit RVers in some of these beautiful parks. I'm talking about the good ones. Uh, go talk to them. 
And uh, make sure they don't have an RV channel and you'll get the truth. And you'll get some clever ways to do what you want to do. What makes Ranger Rob Poopy Bags so special? It's the love for dogs in our environment. We designed a dog waste bag that is deeper and wider for easy pet waste disposal. Ranger Rob Poopy Bags are designed with handles to make it easy to manage and tie off for disposal. And they're lemon scented. Get the best bag for your best friend. Available on Amazon or RangerRobPoopyBags.com. Well, there you go, Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, which is our sponsor and originally is something our company makes, um, which actually helps support our show. And uh, along with other projects, not just this show, not just RVs, outdoor stuff. We have cooking channels. We have all kinds of stuff. All right, so I want to address a letter I got from, I'll just say their first name, Sandy and Mike. Thank you very much for your uh, really kind uh, note you sent me. In fact, uh, let me read some of it here. Hi, great show on podcasts. We really enjoy them. We are just nearing retirement, uh, retirement age, and camped all of our lives, just like us. Me and Sherry did the same thing. Uh, we own a stick and bricks, just like me and Sherry, and plan on doing seasonal camping in the near future, holding on to our stick and bricks for exit plan. Yes, you should have an exit plan because uh, it... <laughs> Just well, just a note on that. I told you before that I sold my boat. And the reason we sold our boat is we're getting older now and it's getting harder to work on it. I had two engines in it. I could hardly get in a... Of course, it wouldn't hurt if I lost some weight. But um, it's just getting too much. And eventually you have to say, I have to stop and, and let it go. And you'll do the same thing with your RV eventually too. Um, and I, I get a kick out of them because they used to listen to a show actually I like to listen to also, um, which was the Higgins. Anyway, uh, let me finish with this. She says, we watch all the young people on YouTube share your concerns. We, uh, we would love to hear you do some interviews with retirement age people who are V. Um, it would be a good balance. And I agree. I totally agree. And actually, a lot of the things I talk about on this show is from people that are already are retirement age that, that RV. And uh, because they don't do shows like this and stuff like that, you don't hear from them. And so I'm going to tell you some things I've uh, learned recently of some folks that are exactly like you. And I've actually talked to and, and, and uh, want to share some stuff. Uh, seems like that generation is left out. Yes, our generation, the real people, the 90, 95%. If you happen to know any other mature, <laughs> mature podcasts or YouTubers, please let us know. I totally agree with that too, and I will. Um, and uh, I, I will tell you shows that I think are uh, in alignment with more folks like us uh, as I find them, if I can find them. <clears throat> um, typically in alignment with people like us aren't doing shows and uh, that's my problem in this show is I am not so involved in RVing that I just have to put out these shows and get my numbers up and get my s subscribers up I do it because I actually enjoy it and there's nothing money wise keeping me from or doing more of these shows. I can do these anytime I want at the comfort of my home. And I have all the equipment I ever need to do podcasts and then some. So uh, uh, I'm not trying to find a way for you to pay for my uh, RV stuff and, and my cameras and all that stuff. Um, anyway, it seems like our generation is left out. If you happen to know of any mature podcasts or YouTubes, please let us know. Uh, yes, and I, and I miss as much as you guys miss the uh, Huggins. They, I think it was Higgins or Huggins. We really enjoyed the Huggins until they came off the road. Um, keep up the good work, and thanks for your breath of fresh air. Sandy and Mike, and I'm not going to say their last name. Anyway, yes, they get it. And actually, I get lots of those kind of notes. And, of course, I definitely, when I... Uh, a nomad or something like that 
uh, hear my shows, they freak out. And, and of course, they uh, put a lot of effort into making sure that they give me a nasty note. <laughs> it's like, boy, yeah, it was a lot of energy you put into that. <laughs> and I just, I put a little heart next to it. It's like, thank you. Love you. <laughs> anyway, but um, uh, yeah, so let me tell you a story about my son-in-law's parents, at least, and I'll just I'll generalize what they've done, and uh, I think it's a great story. All right, this is my story, and I'm sticking to it. And so, uh, anyway, I, I'm not going to use names. I don't think, <laughs> at least not in the last names. Uh, so I want to talk about my son-in-law's parents, who live in Montana. And my daughter and her husband live here in Arizona. So for many years, his folks have been taking their fifth wheel from Montana, come down usually around uh, when it starts snowing up there, down to, uh, uh, oh, uh, down here around November, let's say. I, I, pretty much that's when they come. Uh, so that way they can uh, spend this uh, Christmas with the grandkids and and then they hang out here till uh, about April uh, till we start getting in the 80s and 90s and then they start beelining their way back home. And uh, uh, here's what's so nice about what they do is they actually became part of a community down here. They literally throughout the years that they've been coming down here with their fifth wheel have met many friends and, and acquaintances at the particular RV park they have down here. So you need to look at our RV parks a little different here. And this is in Mesa because we have tons of them. They're giant. We have some mega uh, RV parks and then some mini megas <laughs> and they're, they're communities. They're like little cities within the city. And what's so cool about them? Well, my question to you is, uh, yes, these people say they go out the court side and they say, we love the community and meeting the people, and all that stuff. And, and then if you meet these other people, which are not doing videos and stuff like that and have channels are saying the same thing. The difference is those people, which are all doing videos and stuff like that, and they want free camping are sitting in the middle of the desert with a bunch of rattlesnakes and the black widows. Um, and uh and tarantulas by the way uh just thinking it's the coolest thing ever to be camping around each other and party and the whole works where these folks which is a much higher number ratio wise are doing the same thing in a civil manner <laughs> they have electricity they have sewage they have water they have swimming pools. They have community meeting things. They have swap meets. These are all in the RV parks. They have tennis courts. They have all kinds of game things. They have bingo nights. They have dancing nights. They have uh, potlucks. Constantly have stuff going on to get you because that's all we're, you know, I know when we're RVing is like, all you want to do is get out of the RV and that's where you do tons of road trips. And I was telling you in the last show, Sherry and I don't do as many road trips because we're not eager to get out of our house because we have elbow room. We don't feel cramped. Anyway, so these people go to these mega resorts and, and some of them are very well priced. They'll pay from four fifty a month up to $1,000 a month, depending on the park, for all these wonderful amenities. And they'll have buses and stuff like that. Or go to casinos, or they'll do uh, go to uh, different um, uh, museums and and get-togethers uh, together and and coordinate a bus together. And nobody's and so, and health is not what we're talking about here. These are just people that like to do stuff together, and it's easier just to like do, let's rent a shuttle bus and let's all go up to uh, Talking Stick casino or let's go to see the uh, um, aquarium or, or butterfly stuff and and this. and and they really uh, get close close friendships and the cool thing about that is they also get to see each other every year they all are going back to their homes they're sticking bricks most of them are doing it 
going to the stick and bricks back home when the weather gets a little nicer. And typically, if they've owned their house for quite a while, it may be paid off already. Uh, everybody's scenario is a little different. Some people weren't able to do that. Um, and some people uh, may just use their RV and go back to their property. Uh, anyway, so it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. So to take this even farther, those same folks that came down here every year driving from Montana, pulling a fifth wheel while well, they're getting up, they're older than me and Sherry are. And so they finally decided to buy a park model. And this is kind of what inspired me to do some shows earlier talking about park models. And so they, uh, they just happen to be in the same park that they're at. And most of these parks have probably 60 to 70% park models in them. It's a growing trend. And, and I can see why, because I actually got a nice tour of their place. They bought one. And get a load of this. They got it for, and I went and looked at it. They got it for, and this is within a year and a half ago, for $10,000. And so I finally, yes, um, this year, um, asked if I could come over and see it. And they were more than happy. I mean, they were so happy to have their little uh, park model. So I, um, so this year, well, I guess it'd be last year, they drove down here without their fifth wheel and stayed in their park model because they bought it the year before. Yes, I had a few things I had to spruce up. Not much, nothing like owning an RV. Anyway, so I showed up there, and uh, it's a... Uh, a single wide. It's not one of those L-shaped Arizona room types, but they have uh, you know, a decent little lot. They had some storage things in there. Uh, she really uh, uh, likes to sew and stuff, so they created a sewing room in one of the shacks in the back and uh, and actually had plenty of storage, but it was the cutest little thing I ever seen for $10,000. Now, granted, when you are in a park like that, you're also paying a yearly rent for the property. Um, typically, uh, park models are on rented property, which in turn, I mean, if an RV park was to go under or have financial problems, you could literally move your park model to another location if you had to. Um, but uh, you, there is other places in, in Arizona where you not only can buy a park model, but actually buy the lot. And that is wonderful when you uh, think about it. Because uh, later on, it gets like, who wants to drive a big old motorhome when you're in your 60s or 70s, late 60s or 70s or on up, um, or pull a big old trailer or a fifth wheel when you can just get in a nice family car and drive from Montana or Minnesota or Washington State? Um, when you can just get in the car and do that drive and be comfortable, stay in a motel or two on the way there, which is just as as affordable to do than uh, paying for the fuel and diesel to haul down a, a stressful RV. And, and you know as well as I do, is, uh, every moment you're on the road with your RV, whether it's a motorhome, fifth wheel trailer, uh, it's stressful. There's always that one little thing that could go wrong or something to break or tire to blow um, or a hazard on the road. It's... Uh, um, it gets hard. I mean, it it is stressful. Even if you're good at it, it's still a stress to it. Nothing beats us kicking back in a car and just uh, making that long journey a lot, a lot more comfortable anyway, without hauling a big old RV. So that's one great example of many examples of many, many folks I have met that do exactly the same thing. Either they bring their RV down, stay in the mega resorts, have a ball for the time that they're down here, create wonderful, strong friendships. Then when it gets too hot down here, they all go home, and I'm sure they still keep in contact because I hear them coordinating efforts to make sure that they're all down at the same mega resort at the same time. And uh, it's so neat to hear it was like, oh, yeah, the, the Smiths are coming in next week. Uh, we met them last year, and we can't wait till we meet the Gordons. They'll be back this year, too. They're from uh, Minnesota and uh, Missouri and all these different places. And, and they've got this 
it's kind of like the old days over. When I grew up as a kid, all the neighbors were friends. And my father grew up, and even though we all moved to different houses and stuff over the years, the people that we all lived by back when we were kids were good friends forever and ever. To this day, I'm still in contact with people that used to be our neighbors back in the 60s. <laughs> it's amazing. That doesn't happen today. However, the mega resort or resorts um, for RVers, uh, the normal folks, the real RVers, are actually recreating that old-time Americana by creating good old-fashioned friendships for everlasting friendships that go on for years and years till death do they part. It's wonderful. But that's not all. I got another story for you. Before Sherry and I went on our last full-time RVing, we, uh, and, and, and here's another thing people can do before they retire. We were in Washington State, and we knew that we're gonna. Uh, I was going to retire at 55. So at 53, I think it was, or 54, I uh, we bought our fifth wheel ahead of time. And uh, uh, what we were able to set up, and and I don't, there's everything's different. You never know out there what you can run into, but in Anacortes, Washington, we made a deal. Well, they had a deal. We didn't make a deal that during the off season up there, which happens to be like September through the winter, they had what they called a storage program where you could put your RV on their lot with hookups and whole works and come visit it like and only pay, there was like a flat fee, I think, maybe of $80 a month and paid 25 or something, I don't think it was that high, $20 a night to stay in your rig during the weekend. So Sherry and I were working full-time. This before we retired, we left, took our RV up during the off-season to Anacortes, which is a beautiful place. And the RV's all set up. That means your all your hookups are all done. The whole works. It's almost like having a park model. And you are not charged unless you're there, except for the flat fee of the month. Um, so... At the end of the weekend, I just go in and say, Sherry and I are going to be here for or here for two days. Here's how much do I owe you? And it'd be like maybe thirty five bucks or something. Totally worth it. Um, and we were able to do that. And then uh, during the uh, uh, off season, we either put it in an RV park full time and paid five, six, seven hundred a month. During the summer, uh, during peak season, when they were getting their, they had to make you know their good money then, and we didn't mind paying that. Um, so we always had, we looked at our RV as a vacation home during the times that we're still, uh, weekend warriors. And so, but here's another phenomenon we ran into up there that just totally amazed me. I couldn't help but notice that there was a lot of RVs up there in Washington state. And I remember the weather's opposite of what it is here in Arizona. So the summer is time is everybody likes to go north, and in the winter time everybody likes to go south. So you have snowbirds and what we call sunbirds. Sunbirds go north during the winter here. No, <laughs> during the summer here, because it's so hot. So here's what I found out: it was a bunch of, not just a couple, a lot of RVs up in the Anacortes area, but nobody had trucks. It's like, how can you have this enormous RV, fifth wheel, and you're driving your family car? And so finally, it's like, I got to a point, I got, I get nosy. I just, I just can't help but talk to people. And I met over and over people that said they're from Arizona or some other places, New Mexico, uh, um, even Nevada uh, in Cal Southern California. And they were sunbirds, not snowbirds, sunbirds. What the heck does that mean? So what they were doing, and I didn't even realize it until I actually went to the, uh, when I was actually stirring my RV up there, uh, at times we weren't using it, I just put it in a storage place up there. Turns out that 
uh, and also our company does does web design, uh, not so much anymore. We did a um, uh, held a website for B B three Transport uh, up there in Washington for several years, and so now you get in the picture a little bit. So these people, like one couple, we really got to know they were from Anthem, which is Arizona. And what they do is instead of hauling their RV all the way up nor uh, north from Arizona or Anthem, they store it in the winter up in Washington in the storage areas for reasonable prices like 100 a month at the most. I think I, I store it up there too, and it was under 100 in some cases. Um, and so when they decided to go up north they'd hop in a car but they'd make a phone you know, and they'd make arrangements for uh and in fact a lot of them just make the arrangements before they leave the year before of a certain space for six months let's say up in washington so they call a transport company which will charge them maybe let's say i'll use a high number i think it's high uh 200 250 dollars they call the transport company, maybe it's the total package, and say, I have arrangements for uh, space uh, 52 at um, Pioneer RV Park up there in Arizona, uh, up there in uh, Anacortes, and uh, please transport, or sometimes, I think maybe they actually go, to, I think they meet with the transport people the day they get up there to be able to let them get into the storage unit or your storage area. The transport company, which is bonded and insured, will hook up to their fifth wheel and take it to the RV park, which is only a few miles away, and set it up for them or get it in, in place for them. And that's it. <laughs> And so they stop paying for storage till they put it back in six months later. And then they start paying full-time rates, maybe 600 a month or whatever it is. Uh, the B up in Washington State where it's so much cooler and green and pretty and the whole works. Um, without the uh, stress of hauling their fifth wheel all the way up from the south. And there's hundreds of them doing it. And I, so that's when I discovered I actually did a video called uh, called uh, Sunbirds. What's a sunbird? And uh, literally showed you people with RVs that had no trucks. <laughs> and not just a couple. It was a lot of them. <laughs> anyway, so there's, and so there's an example of people owning sticks and bricks in the south that go the opposite direction based on the seasons or the temperatures. And that's a majority of people, too. And, of course, the same people kind of do the same thing every year, and they become a community and a bunch of new friendships. So even after the season's over, they're still in contact with all their new friends they met that do the same thing they do and, and once again, create a wonderful community and friendships for lifetimes. Uh, truly amazing. I had no idea that was going on. So those for, uh, make sure I get these names right, for Sandy and Mike, there is so many clever things you could do. And if you like the nightlife, maybe you like casinos and, and stuff like that, you can actually work out some deals with some of those places or nearby. Um, uh, for example, uh, let's talk about Las Vegas. In 2006 and seven, Sherry and I were full-time at the time, and we ended up going down to the Oasis uh, RV report, uh, park, which is what they call a five-star resort. Not a cheap place to take your RV, but it's gigantic. It's enormous, and it's very nice. Um, perfect? No, nothing. I haven't seen a real perfect RV park. However, and that costs us, I would say it was around eight or 900 a month, but think about where you're at. And you pay for electricity too. So your bill could be over a thousand every month. Uh that's just how it is. Uh I know you guys just whoa, what about free camping? 
would you stop on that free camping? Jeez. People, if you had jobs or careers, you wouldn't be asking about free camping all the time. I'm not talking about free here. This is stuff that you work for all your lives and you can afford to do. So Sherry and I stayed at, and it was kind of funny, I actually learned how to be a limo driver back then. <laughs> actually went to a school, worked for a company that does, uh, and I drove a limo for, I did it for about a week and I realized this is not for me. <laughs> But it was a funny story. However, um, we uh, got there and stayed there for six months. We lived in uh, uh, Las Vegas in our RV for six months back in, in that those days. And there's other people down there for the same kinds of reasons. They used their RV for their jobs. So one person on one side of us was uh, her husband was a construction worker and um uh, a union guy that had a chance to work on a highway project um, while they're down there. So they just used their RV and they, and they lived in their RV full time because at the time work was all over the place and the people that were mobile, um, they were construction workers that could work in uh, uh, city and government contracts. If you're a mobile, you're always employed. And uh, so this guy made really good bucks and they were saving their money to buy actually their retirement house. And they now live in Walla Walla, Washington. And a uh, great plan. They used their RV as a tool to meet their retirement goals. Another couple on the other side of us were really good friends of ours, still are. So is the other folks. Uh, they, they now live in Florida. Uh, her name was Kelly, and I think his his name was Steve. Um, and uh, uh, Marsha was the other people that we met. I can't remember her husband's name. I mean, that was over 10 years ago. Anyway, we're still in contact. They're on my Facebook page, and we still say hi and, and show off our grandkids and the whole thing. Um, they He retired from uh, a county prison kind of work that he did and was able to retire, I believe at age 50 and now, and has a pension and now they're uh, living full time, still in their RV in Florida and still say hello to us and keep in contact with us. Friends for life. Um, and once again, that was a mega resort. There's about 900 spaces there at Oasis RV park in Las Vegas. And there's other parks. I think Prump's got some really nice parks. And there's some other very fancy parks that you can go to. And they cost money. Yep. I am not talking about free camping, boondocking out in the desert with the rattlesnakes. We're talking about real jobs, <laughs> real real life, nice, comfortable places to, uh, and meet nice people and have amenities. Uh, showers, uh, the place that... Um, Oasis has nice pools, nice gathering areas. They, I think they had a movie night. We used to play on Thursday nights. We used to play nickel Texas Hold'em. That was a kick in the butt. Um, and, uh, got some really good people we met. Um, some came and go, some stay, were there for a long times and some we kept seeing every year because we, you know, we'd still go back and pass through. Um, some of those people that we met are older than us. Uh, aren't around anymore, but we had the privilege to have them as friends because we went to communities like that, and uh, I I do miss that. Um, those and those people were not doing videos, and in fact, in 2006, we were hardly it really wasn't a thing that much doing videos about that kind of stuff. So um, we were never pointing a camera in their face and stuff like that. Um, it really, uh, the trend for RV travel channels really didn't start till 2009, 10, 11, somewhere around there and you started to see them. Um, but anyway, uh, we're, I was still in internet marketing back then, but it was more for web design and boosting people's websites. So, uh, and then of course, you know, the 2008 crash came along and, uh, we had a house at the time and it was definitely hard times back then. Uh, Sherry and I had to regroup. There was no doubt. <laughs> so, but yeah, so you can do that too. Uh, maybe, 
you know, it depends on your career. If you got a career where uh, you would benefit from being mobile before you retire, use your RV for the last year or two to one, see if you can stand it, two, to keep up with the good paying union jobs, especially in construction and things like that. Then when the time comes that you could retire, you can make that decide, decision whether you want to actually try to live in an RV or do a park model or buy a house, do both, whatever you want to do. So, uh, yeah, but uh, there's some great examples I wanted to point out to uh, to uh, those folks. Uh, once again, I keep forgetting the name, Sandy and Mike. Uh, of and I'll I'll get more started for you, and and I'll, I'll try to get some interviews done. Uh, but the next thing I guess it's time to move on to RV drama. Ford's RV Refrigeration Training Center, a licensed school, has many objectives for only one product, the RV refrigerator. We educate others so they can provide a repair service in their area, repair their own refrigerator, or when they hear throw it away, buy a new one, they'll know the right questions to ask in order to know whether or not their technician has been properly educated. Since 1984, we have saved RV owners money, provided them the best warranty, and reduced our carbon footprint. We accomplish these objectives daily through our service and training programs. Military veterans can even use their GI Bill for our training program, which includes our customized tools and manuals. Visit RVRefrigeration.com to find free DIY repair videos and information on our service and training programs. As a thanks to Rob Scribner, we're offering his listeners a free 11-point RV refrigerator inspection and one free night of camping at our location in Benton, Kentucky. Go to RVRefrigeration.com to call and make an appointment. That's RVRefrigeration.com. Thanks for listening. Stay cool and GBYAY. And that's uh, Ford Refrigeration. Uh, make sure if you're interested in learning some kind of skills that you can maybe make some money uh, working on RVs while you're traveling and stuff, um, they have a wonderful training program. And you can literally take your RV there and stay on the premises and get certified for RV refrigeration, which can really uh, be a profitable business to be in. <laughs> RV refrigerators are pain in the butt. So uh, RV drama, I said I was gonna talk about some of them. And uh, so I do monitor some of the other channels that drive me crazy. I can't even watch the, a whole video on some of these, but I'll start off, uh, except uh, one I really enjoy from Canada. I do enjoy line screw one. And the reason I like him is he doesn't care. <laughs> he lives in his RV, but he's retired, lives a, a great life, spends money, goes to Hawaii. He does things and he doesn't, and he loves to stir up the, the feathers of folks. And he's very talented as far as editing and, uh, uh photography. Uh, so, uh, I do appreciate him, and uh, so I, you never know what kind of video he's going to do. It's just when you think he's going to like really do some crazy thing on RV stories, and he's good at pointing out this RV nomad e-beggar kind of stuff with a bunch of crap. Anyway, uh, he, uh, he'll he come out with a video out of the blue that's totally not related to RVing, and I love it. Uh, he keeps... It real. It isn't twenty four seven RV life pushing it on his channel, <clears throat> uh, but he does like to play with the drama that goes on, <laughs> and it just cracks me up. And I I hope that someday I get a chance to really meet him and get to know each other. We have, I think, just a little bit of an age difference between us. He's a little younger than I am and stuff, but uh, I would and very much enjoy just meeting him and get to know him and actually collaborate in some funny stuff. Um, not to make my subscriptions go up or, or views, but just because we have some of the same morals and ethics. Then I watch another one, Living Free. I don't know why I still watch that, but uh, that's drama as his best between girlfriends and problems. And I guess he just recently did a video where he just went off on people. And that's where their total life is thinking about their RV videos. And that is not how you want to come out here and do RVing, folks. Just go out and RV and keep the camera at home or keep the camera at home to take pictures of those beautiful uh, cactus flowers we have down here and, and places you go and the beaches and send them to the kids and, 
and the grandkids and um, maybe meet up with uh, is just this RV drama is something else. And of course you got your nomadic fanatic. The one thing going for him is he does good photography and coverage of where he goes, but out of the blue, just like the uh, living free dude, something gets under their skin and they go off the Richter scale and they hurt themselves. Um, of course, every day I watch their shows, I go, what are you going to be doing when you get older? <laughs> when you become re older and retired like us, how are you going to do it? <laughs> I don't know. I just It's amazing. They live and breathe their RV uh, to a point like um, Nomadic Fanatic will literally dress up his whole RV to pop you know, all about his YouTube channel. He has a very large following, and I think a lot of it is if he can get away from his drama, he literally does do a very good job at showing you where he's at. But once again, he's all into the free camping and keeping things cheap and all that stuff. And then when something actually breaks and costs money as a fit, and then sometimes the e-bagging gets out of hand. He was one of the ones that really started a lot of that. Um, so you could pay for his traveling. Um, when he keeps his level of reporting at a high quality, uh, I could see literally how people would want to support him, just like Sherry and I like to support SV Delos. When they can keep the quality up and keep the professionalism up, you tend to say, hey, I want more of this, and I will donate to you. Uh, but then when they start kicking in drama and bad-mouthing and anger and uh, doing some immature things, uh, then I, we, a lot of us start shying away again because it's like, well, I thought he was growing out of all that. Because when he was first on, it was a lot of drama. Uh, and of course, uh, there's two new RV channels out. The one I was telling you about, The Odd Couple, and there's another one. Uh, I, the only reason I remember them is they're complaining about flies down in Yuma. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, they're drama oriented channels and they're doing it to build up their numbers and views. And uh, you'll notice they've gotten really good at making their thumbnails. And uh, one to two, three words at the most big, you know, big fail or disaster or big letter, something to pull you in and then turn out the disaster as they spilled a cup of coffee. Um, it's uh, all about building their numbers up because they want you to pay for their camping. And of course, every other, I mean, all of them are like free camping this, free camping that. Who cares about free camping? Except those that probably shouldn't be on the road yet. Um, and then there's the exception to the world, which I always point out, the exceptions of fixed income folks and stuff like that. Then last but not, last but not least, I think, I watched a, I don't know why I watched this, a Bob Wells little live feed he does, and he's sitting at a high-class Denny's with some folks talking about a van they're going to give away, which is like, we're going to give away a free van to someone so we can bring you into this poverty world of living in a van and pooping in a bucket. Uh, it's a glamorous world, and look how all... You know, we're all real ritzy people. And uh, it's like a show of full-time promotion of how low life you can be. This channel is not trying to make you a low life. This show, this podcast is saying, be Americana, be a patriot, be successful, have a career enjoy the amenities of the United States, get an RV, enjoy the roads. And yes, you'll have problems, but you've got money and you can handle it because you planned, you made plans, you thought this over and you're not going out there to, to spend your whole time. It's like 24 seven. These guys are out there trying to find free camping to a point that they'll stay on the side of the road. They'll stay in little turnouts. They'll stay at Walmarts. They'll even go to um, uh, 
Bass Pro Shops and stuff, and and brag they got free camping. Yippee skippy, good for you. You just freeloaded off society for a day. Good for you. We're so proud of you. I wish we had more videos of the 90, 95% of the real RVers out there. They are not making videos. In fact, I've met so many of them and I'll tell them, oh yeah, I do RV talk radio or I do this or I, I talk to these other channels. They don't know what I'm talking about. Or some will say, I get a kick out of this. It's like we used to uh, be sponsored by RV Lock. And uh, somebody will say, oh, I've seen some of your shows. Uh, and they recognize her. They recognize Sherry, not me. I do like 90% of the shows and talk and narrate, but they remember Sherry doing a editorial basically of how they install an RV lock into your RV and Sherry did it. And I wanted Sherry to do it to show how easy anybody could install an RV lock into their RV or trailer. And so that was a very popular video, which happened to be 100% Sherry. So a whole bunch of people saw it because a lot of people like the RV lock even those that are the 90, 95%. And when they did go look up videos of how they installed the RV lock, Sherry's video would come up, and that's what they relate to most of the time when I met some of these people going, oh, I, I have seen some of your videos, and she did a great job. It's like, what? <coughs> Excuse me. I thought I was a superstar. I guess not. <laughs> I'm a legend as long as I know it, right? So, uh, yeah, drama has been super good. Um, there's another video I watch. Let me see if I can remember the name of it. Strolling Through Life is the name of her channel. And uh, I get a kick out of her. She's kind of a millennial age person. Looks like she, I don't know her whole story, but it looks like she did do some full timing in an a, uh, Airstream. And she... Uh, <laughs> kind of goes, all right, so I bought into the minimalist living. I did the RV things. And she came back and says, and she, and her last video was, I sold the Airstream. And she's like apologetic, like people, I can't live like this. Yes, when you are in an RV, you tend to be more of a minimalist. You realize you're not such an imprint on the environment. All these things. And it's like, it's just not for me, people. I like to be able to turn on the shower and not worry about how much water I'm using. I like the openness. I like the base. She's like, I gave it a try. It wasn't for me. She wasn't bad mouthing it. She's just saying, I, I grew up as American and we have this capitalist society of, and amenities that we can have. And I want them. <laughs> what is wrong with that? Um, Yes, I mean, even as a minimalist RVer and all that stuff, you still impact the environment. People just impact, that's just how we are. I mean, uh, no matter what, cows, cows, cow farts, <laughs> I guess are a problem too. I, uh, I often wonder if uh, humans have more of an issue with that stuff than, uh, than the cows do. I, I'm not going there. <laughs> Anyway, but I appreciated her honesty of saying, I tried it. I was open to it. I went out on the road, and I do appreciate the fact they got to go see some stuff. But I can't live like this in an RV because it's like I spent all my time concerned about the RV, and I didn't have time to w get work done And because the, the, the all-consuming RV uh, kept me from – Getting some of my, because, you know, usually at that age, you're still working for a living, hopefully. Um, and uh, she said it was just not right. So I appreciated the fact that she tried it. And I think uh, if she, she in her own way was saying, you guys all talked about how cool this was. I tried it and it sucked. <laughs> and, uh, then she, and then I can't believe she's like, well, maybe someday I'll do a van. But she says only to do, tr you know, like day trips or uh, one week trips and stuff um hopefully she finds a van that has a bathroom in it because uh i don't think she's the kind of person who would appreciate the fact that she has to live from a bucket yeah 
So the other thing I also wanted to mention towards the end of the show here is an RV, in a sense, also is a good backup for, yeah, prepping. I'll say it. I, I tend to think that everybody should, one way or another, kind of prepare for out, you know, power outages, big storms, depends where you live like that and stuff. An RV is a self-contained unit that if it survives something like that, um, could help you, especially if you're able to keep your RV at your home as a backup for uh, prepping. Uh, you know, you got the gas stoves, places to sleep, you got battery systems. Sometimes uh, even I have a little bit of a solar system on mine where I could keep my batteries charged up. Um, and uh, it could be a good, in a sense, fallout shelter a little bit for cooking, uh, rest, you know, if you lose your water, uh, you have holding tanks, um, you know, there's a few things, or even keep your RV, like we have our RV still up in Central Oregon. If some reason Arizona had a problem, and we do have that option of, be lining up to Central Oregon, and we have a place to live. Uh, so, you know, there's a real positive thing about having an RV. But really, an RV is cost money. It's a wonderful thing. It's a lot of fun. It allows you to go places. I, I met, by the way, a lot of couples that traveled a lot for their first year and then started going to mega resorts and said, we got to see the Oregon coast. We got to go see certain things, Galveston or whatever they wanted to see, um, and got that out of their, um, but off their bucket list, and then they started to enjoy the RV mega resorts and stuff like that, and uh, uh, so they they you know they did get some traveling in before they started using their RV as a regular uh, tool for just getting out of bad you know the seasons of weather. <clears throat> so anyway, I hope the show was a good for uh, uh, giving you ideas of what to do, uh, what you'd like to do in the future uh, for RV retirement and travel and uh, realize that really the people you need to talk to are the ones that are not doing videos and podcasts uh, or I've been there like the Higgins or since they were kind of like realists because they were in and out of RVing and uh, and also went through life where um, your body's not as strong as it used to be and life changes. And, of course, young people don't think that will ever happen to them, and it does. So with that note, guys, I'm going to let you go. I hope this has been a good show for you. Please uh, uh, keep in contact. We love your feedback. We prefer you guys be professional, and so will we be. Um, and uh, go get yourself an RV. Just plan things out. Think it through. Be real, folks. Anyway, thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. I'm Rob Scribner. Have a great day and be safe out there. Bye now. Thank you for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over. Then go down to the description and think about becoming a member of our Patreon. This will allow you to get special content just for you and help us build future content. Thank you.